Hey friends, it's Susie and I'm back for week five of Tech Tuesday and y'all that means, I know I say this every week, but that means we've now been together 17 times. If you started tuning in during Techmas in December, so 17 times y'all, that's almost 20. I think that's a big milestone. So anyway, uh, tonight I want to talk about content delivery tools. A lot of, um, a lot of what we talk about again is just people going to a conference, getting excited, excited, picking a tool, and they're not maybe necessarily processing through why that would be the best tool. It's just, oh my gosh, it's cool, it's shiny, it's fun, I'm bored, that kind of thing. So I began my series on pedagogy and tools last week when I talked about what to look for in assessment tool. So tonight we're gonna to get down to the nitty gritty with content delivery. You're ready to give a lesson, you need some kind of a tool to help you deliver that content, what's the way to choose it? So I wanna start with giving, as promised, my four tips for choosing a content delivery tool. Um, and I always am taking this and adapting it on my own blog, so I just wanna show you that I have a blog post ready to go tomorrow night, and if you scroll over to suzylolly.com, if I go to that, um, Go preview mode here. If you go to suzylolly.com, you're gonna see an article on Tech Tuesday number five, and so I'm just pausing here for a minute to let you see that. But let's talk about four tips for choosing the right content delivery tool. Number one, as I said with assessment tools, you wanna to think about something that is device agnostic or device unrequired. Because, I don't know about you, but every school I go to seems to be a mix of tools uh, that students have for access. A lot of times students have phones, depending on their age, and here we have a doggy coming in the room, so I'm gonna let my husband get Shelby out. But anyway, we have, you know, kids have phones in their pockets, they have Kindles that they bought from, you know, Amazon, or they have a Walmart tablet, or they have an iPad, or they have a laptop. So if you're counting on everybody having uniformity and you just being able to, to create one set of directions and it works, uh, probably not. So you want a content delivery tool that is device agnostic or unnecessary. Um, you also wanna make sure that your tool is engaging for students. I'm gonna tell you a true story. I'm a technology trainer at six different schools, plus a, a friend invites me to come hang out with them. And uh, so at one of my schools last year, I had a man that was so proud, he said, Susie, you showed us Sway, which is obviously one of my favorites. I've already talked about it this year and I'm gonna talk about it tonight. But he said, Susie, you showed us Sway and I'm doing a Sway every week. Oh. <laughs> I tried to be excited for him because really for him, using any kind of technology at all was a big deal. However, using the same tool every week is not gonna be engaging for your students. Thus the fact I'm showing you four tonight, plus I'm sure you have several that you could add to my toolkit. Third, I wanna talk about the 10-2 rule. I used to, when I was a middle teacher, I accidentally stumbled into this training program, and it's a long story I can tell you if you want everyone to hear about that. But I became a learning focused schools trainer. I thought the program was great, but I went through the program separately and you were supposed to be with a team. I didn't know that, my principal approved it, yada, yada. Anyway, one of the things that has always stood out to me from that program, because a lot of it was about pedagogy, it was not about technology really at all, but one of the things that's always stood out from that program was the 10 and two rule. Students, whether they are children's students, adult students, whatever age they are, students cannot process 45 minutes of continuous information. So when you're looking for a content delivery tool, you want to still focus on, let me give them 10 minutes of information and then two minutes of application. So everything I'm gonna show you tonight, the four tools that we're gonna talk about tonight, OneNote, Office Mix, Sway, and Nearpod are all gonna be, I want you to keep in the back of your mind that they allow for engagement or application opportunities after you show a little bit of content. And then finally, this is gonna seem really silly, but when you're delivering content, you want it to look good on the screen. You don't want people to have to squint, which you might have to do right now because this font on my blog is extremely small. I'm gonna look into maybe modifying that a little bit. But you know, you want, when you're using a tool with students, you wanna make sure that the visuals, the fonts, everything is big enough to see. So another, tool, another tip that you wanna look for in content delivery is does it fit well on whatever device they're going to use? So I'm actually gonna address these features with some tools tonight. So let's get down with Office Mix. And I'm gonna to pause to ask my husband to get the dog out and shut the door, so anyway. If he heard me, I'm gonna let him do that. I have three dogs and they just bust in and then you can hear their jingle bells. But anyway, moving on. 
So we're going to go ahead and start by talking about Office Next. And I want to tell you how to do it. Pardon me. I'm going to go get my doggy out of the room. Y'all, I do try to tell my husband when I'm filming a video, but I don't know that he always hears me. So anyway, moving on. So sorry about the dog barking. This is real life here in Georgia. Anyway, Office Mix is actually as a separate tool going away, which makes me really sad. But it actually is what made PowerPoint cool again. I don't know about you, but a few years ago, I stopped using PowerPoint in favor of tools like Prezi or Powtoon or things that are still cool. Um, but I just thought, you know, PowerPoint is so boring. I, you know, it's not something I want to use anymore. And then four years ago, a tool was added to PowerPoint. You used to have to get it separately. Then it started coming with it. And you can see it right here on my screen. It was called Mix, Office Mix specifically. And the purpose of this tool is threefold to me. The three most important things that I would use this tool for. Number one, any kind of screencasting. I used to be a disciple of Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, you could use the free version, but then you can only make short videos. Um, you know, you couldn't do very much editing with it. And then you could upgrade or whatever to the longer version. So I did do that because that was five years ago before we had Office Mix. But any kind of screencasting you want to do, it builds that into PowerPoint presentations. Number two, you can do voiceover. So let's say you have a slide deck that is not self-explanatory, and I'm going to just see if I have one here. Okay, for example. I'm going to go teach second graders tomorrow, and if I weren't going to be there, I might want to have their teacher understand more about the presentation I'm going to do. Maybe she would have to deliver it, so I might want to use this slide recording button, and I'm not going to push it now because my camera's already dedicated to this presentation. It wouldn't work anyway, but when I would hit slide recording, I could then talk about or voice over my slides. Screen recording would be... For example, you have a, a parent who just cannot navigate your website or your learning management system. Use screen recording for that. And then number three, it takes just what was a PowerPoint, which is going to be very teacher driven and allows you to turn it into a student driven lesson because the teacher is cloning him or herself, inserting into the video. And then you all of a sudden have the capability to have a self running center station teaching type of lesson. So I love Office Mix. Office Mix, the tool, has now been turned into, and you can see I'm purposely not running an update, <laughs> because Mix is going to be a new tab in PowerPoint. It's going to be called Recording. It's going to have some same tools, some different tools. Another feature that I used to love about Mix was that you could get analytics from it. Well, that is probably going away. What's going away is the Mix server. So I don't want to tell you right now how to download Mix. What I want you to know is that it's available as the recording tab in PowerPoint. I probably will keep calling it Mix out of a bad habit, but just know that PowerPoint is cool again. You can slide record, you can screencast, you can do all kinds of things on that recording tab. So currently these are uploading to a Mix server. If you are in an Office 365 district, then you now have a tool on Office 365 or depending on whether your local network analysts, whoever have turned this on. But there's now a tool called Stream, and I just want to show you that really fast. Okay. And everything, it is a changing. Every time I click there, there's new stuff. It's called Stream. It looks like a little fish, so that'll help you remember it. But the new video hosting service, where you can also upload, you can you know save and upload these recordings that you make, is called Stream. So I have been putting my mixes there. So if you decide you would like to do that, then if you've still got Mix, you can actually save the video. See right here, it says export to video. I'm assuming the recording tab will have that same feature. And then Stream is a great place to host without having to put something on YouTube. This is more like a student accessible channel, okay? So for content delivery, tool number one, one of my definite favorites is my number two favorite tool of all that I've learned in the last several years, Office Mix a.k.a. the recording tab in PowerPoint. Just some examples that I wanted to talk you through really quickly. Anything you need to teach students, or if, you're, if your students are adults, anything you need to teach them. How to run, I do Breakout EDU. I, I wrote a whole how to run this game and had some other people contribute slides for that. Um, when I needed to give an orientation, think about parent volunteers you have coming in. If you need to give an orientation. Um, just anything you need to teach. How to students, teaching students how to print teaching people how to make a, a photo slideshow in PowerPoint. And the list goes on. If you look down here, 
I have page after page after page of, of office mixes. So if you need some examples, just reach out and I will be happy to share with you. So that is again, a favorite content delivery tool. What's next? Of course, Sway. Sway is my number three favorite tool. I do, it's so weird. I have a little hierarchy in my mind. Um, but with Sway, I wanna show you some specific ones. And so I've got those links here, okay? And let's talk about what Sway is first. If you have not seen me talk about Sway before, Sway was my first topic that I talked about in week one of Tech Tuesday. Sway is a digital poster. What I love about it is that it's a multimedia and, um, presentation where you can pull in embed code, audio, amazing visuals, and it has one of those tips I talked about with content delivery, which is responsive design. It looks good on any device. Continuing that. So let's get in and let's look at some examples of sways that I have. And I'm gonna, I think, control click here. There we go. Let me just show you a few examples of how you might use this with students. I am a technology trainer, as I said earlier, so I have used Sway to share a newsletter. Okay, here's some topics that are coming up. I'm bragging on a school here. What are some things you might want to book me for? So if you're an instructional technology coach watching this, you might be interested to see, you know, that you could use it that way. I also have one that's a teacher newsletter I'll come to in a minute. I didn't do a very good job of writing which one was which, <laughs> but I will link all these in the sidebar. So just show you a couple things I've done with it. Do, 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 do. Okay, again, I'm a huge gamification fan. I teach Breakout EDU a lot. I'm an authorized trainer for them. And so I have embedded before a form, specifically in this one, a Google form, where students could play digital breakout. I used a Sway for that. So I'm delivering content. The content this time is a digital lock. Okay, what else? I also have used it to deliver content. Oh, this one I didn't make, but y'all, I think it's so cool. This one has a GIF on the homepage, and I never even knew you could do that. I want you to watch this. So this very smart teacher showed how, as the equation changes, the parabola changes. Isn't that so cool? And so you can embed GIFs in sways. Okay, so this one, again, I didn't make it. I'm not a math teacher. I'm an English teacher. But I will give you a bonus tip here, makeagift.com, and I will write myself a note to put that over in the comments. Makeagift.com. Now, I'm not saying everything on there is clean, but if you make your own gifts, you can share them and you can embed them, just like this person is doing here, and that would be beautiful for a Sway. What else? I've got a couple more, because Sway, I've used so much for content delivery, so I wanted to make sure I focused on that one. Here comes another one. This is that teacher newsletter I was talking about. So, oh, isn't this beautiful? <laughs> Y'all, we just got, okay, now it's loading. We just got upgraded to fiber optic this week, so everything should be better. But here I've embedded a video from Office 365 video. Again, that's becoming stream. I've snipped her spelling words. I've got the birthdays. You know, I've got what's going on that week. Um, you can embed QR codes and students can get to different activities there. So again, delivering newsletter type content, you don't have to send a boring newsletter anymore. And I will give a shout out to my district because we actually won a state level award for our district technology newsletter called Connection Points. You know why? Sway. And then one more I wanted to show you. And that one is, and you probably hear another dog barking. That's my chihuahua, but he's further away. <laughs> Uh, when Sway first came out, so this one's kind of old, but I went in to work with some students who had to do crime in a song because they were in a criminal justice class in the high school. And so they had to analyze how crime showed up in a certain song. So being a 90s and 80s girl that I am, I picked um, The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia by Reba, talking about murder, okay? I linked the song lyrics. I have a biography of the artist. Here's the crime that was in the song and the Georgia rate for those crimes. This was just a template I gave, so that's why it's not filled in very much. What are the consequences in Georgia for those crimes? How do they affect young people? And then what are my sources? So y'all, for any kind of content delivery that needs to look this nice, needs to be interactive, Sway is the key. I really love Sway. I do want to give one more tip here. And again, this is not a full Sway training. On certain days, I might actually do a 
head to toe, full training. And I do have some videos already prepared. So if you ever need access to a full training, you can just reach out. But tonight I'm just showing you how different tips work for content delivery. But here's a tip I want to end with on Sway. If you go to the word share, you are able as a student or as a teacher to allow other people to edit your Sway. Now you'll see the link changes. If I say view, it looks like this. If I say edit, it looks like this. So what's neat is that if students wanted to be simultaneously working on the same Sway, then I believe up to 10 students works well. Any more than that, you probably would have some trouble. But they can just click the editing link, share it, and you've also got options for who can receive that link. So again, for any kind of content sharing that needs to look beautiful, respond on any device, Sway is the way. So I'm going to close out of some of these, just trying to save bandwidth here, okay? So what's next? Next, I want to show you guys, I'm on the OneNote Love Boat. If you have listened to me train ever, you've been watching these videos, you've probably heard me say that. And I'm on the OneNote Love Boat. It is, yes, you guessed it, my number one favorite tool because of everything it can do. I mean, where I used to carry three ring binders, and if I were to show you my shelf behind me, I have these huge fat binders. I taught most recently ninth and 11th grade lit. And so in my binders, I would keep every Scantron, every key for every assignment I gave, co extra copies of assignments. And I had, for each semester, a huge three-inch binder that I carried around everywhere on top of stacks of essays or whatever. I didn't know about OneNote then. What a sad life. <laughs> now, I want you just to see a sampling of my notebooks over on the left here. All my recipes in one place. Every time I taught um, a whole... Microsoft class, here's my stuff in one place. When I teach gamification, here's my stuff in one place. When I teach breakout EDU, everything in one place. And cute tabs, I can rename. So I just am so much on the OneNote Love Boat because it has taken everything that used to be miserable to carry around and it's made it searchable, organizable, and portable. So I wanna show you specifically one portion of OneNote that I would use for student content delivery. And again, closing some stuff up here to make some room. If you are an Office 365 district, or remember on several videos I've shown you how to get a free Office 365 account, you can use Class Notebook. And so Class Notebook is a specific type of OneNote that is already partitioned for you into three sections. And I'm going to show those to you in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and say create a Class Notebook, much to my chagrin because y'all have so many of these, but I'm going to call this Sample Notebook. Back Tuesday so that I can delete this later. Okay, I just went in to make a notebook. I hit next. And it's going to show you now these three partitioned sections of the notebook. You have a section where everyone can work together for better or for worse. I can write in there. The students can write in there. Everybody can add. Everybody can delete. Then I've got a look, don't touch section called the content library where I can push things out to students almost like my digital textbook that I don't want them to touch. And then finally, there are these private sections that are automatically created where the teacher and student have two-way communication. If I need to grade something, only that person's going to see it. If I need to write them a note, they need to turn something in. It's beautiful for that purpose. It's a private space, a read-only space, and then an everybody space. I'm going to go ahead and tap next. You can share a notebook with another teacher, and they would need to be in your same district. Okay, and you would need to search their names there. I'm not going to do that. You can paste in student names. I'm just going to use a sample student. Okay, and you know, actually, I don't want to do that because I don't want you to see that student's data. And then I would just decide what's, what sections are going to be in my student spaces. I'd preview and then I'd be done. So let's pretend I've made this notebook. I actually have one already made. So I'm going to go down here and let me find one for you that is a student or that is a class notebook. Give me just a minute. Probably should have thought of this first. Okay, here's one. This was one I used for technology training last year, so nothing too, um, too unkosher, if that's a word. And you'll see I have collaboration space where people could come in and write if they wanted to. My content library, these are all the topics I train the teachers on. So again, we're focusing on content delivery. I can have tabs, and then under those tabs, I can have pages over to the right. Okay. And then I use my curvy green arrow. Some people call it an umbrella handle or a fish hook to go back out. 
And then here are all my students, and my students have their own private sections where we could correspond. There also is another section you can turn on called Teacher Only. So if you needed to do some preparation work before teachers or students saw it, whoever your students are, you can turn that section on and it allows you to do secret things. So let me show you some cool things you can do in a notebook. And I'm just going to go to a new page. doesn't really matter. I just want to show you as far as content delivery goes why Class Notebook is my favorite. Okay? I'm going to go, I'm in regular OneNote 2016. There are several versions of OneNote, so your buttons may not match mine exactly. But just a couple features you can add. You can insert a whole file printout. So instead of just having a link to a Word document, you can actually take a Word document. Let's see if I've got one handy. You can take a Word document and you can actually have it print out on the page. The purpose of that being that when it prints out, students can write and draw all over it. So I'm going to put in this thing about ballads and sonnets. Who knows what it is because I haven't looked at this in a while. I'm so fly by the seat of my pants in some ways. <laughs> and y'all, this has been happening to me. So let me show you what happens. If it gives you an error that it can't insert it, we're going to go the back way. I'm going to go into Word first. Oh good, we're starting in safe mode. <laughs> y'all, only while you're watching me. <laughs> oh my. Okay, well anyway, you just have to take my word for it that you can do a file printout and it will actually put the document on the page instead of just an attachment. You can also do audio and video recordings right there for your students. So think about students who aren't just visual learners but might need directions read to them or might need you to demonstrate something. You can record audio or video. Again, I, it's not going to work well right now because I'm sharing my screen. You can put a spreadsheet if your students are working on something with Excel. You can add templates. There are tons of templates already built into OneNote, some of them falling under the academic, like let me give my kids this lecture note topic, okay? And I actually deliver that to them. One of my favorite features, stickers. And there are four new sticker packs ready, and I have not upgraded because I didn't want to mess up the video tonight. And this is going to give me a downloading message. Our internet's supposed to be six levels faster, y'all. I'm not believing it right now because... You see this, and word crashed, and you know, all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, so tonight's going to be a lot of imagining, but again, I have lessons just on OneNote, so if you're like, Susie, I love that. I really want to learn more. I can teach you all about it. I've got videos already prepared to teach you OneNote start to finish. But all of these things I can add for my students, and then because it's a class notebook, I can send pages to them to their sections. I can check their work. I can create an assignment that feeds to my learning management system if you have that. All kinds of amazing things just because I'm using OneNote, which is my number three content delivery tool, but really is my favorite of all. And then guys, unfortunately, number four, and I don't know if it's my internet or not, but the fourth one I want to just give you a hint about because it will not let me load it tonight is Nearpod.com. I can get to the Nearpod page. But every button I click up here just is a white screen and goes nowhere. You'll have to take my word for it. But what do I love about Nearpod? Nearpod is my number four tool for content delivery. And what's so cool about it is that it allows you, I always say this, it allows you to hijack student devices for your own purposes, for learning. So if they're going to bring it to school, it allows me to force them to use it for my purposes. What it does is it takes a slide deck and delivers it straight to student phones. But wait, or student devices, I said phone because that's what I've used it for mostly. But you can deliver content straight to a student device and it kind of locks their screen on that one thing. Plus, they're able to respond. So remember that 10-2 rule I talked about at the very beginning? They're able to respond to your content. So maybe for one slide I've talked about, you know, I'm just going back to this one. Maybe I have shown them how to use a number line to do addition. Now I can send out this slide where they can actually draw on it, write on it, and practice instead of just listening to me womp, womp, womp like the Charlie Brown teacher or like Ferris Bueller's teacher, okay? So I'm able to deliver that content and they're able to interact with it right from their devices. So I'm sorry I can't show you Nearpod. I clicked on it several times. I reloaded. It's just having a moment tonight. But guys, that's four tips, four tools. If you want more, again, tomorrow I'm going to be releasing a blog post called Tech Tuesday number five with everything I said in more detail, this video embedded. I hope this helped. I hope you'll tune in again. And hey, Anna and Dusty and Alan and Jamie, I'm so glad you tuned in. So glad you're watching. And to everyone who watches later, hope you've enjoyed this Tech Tuesday. And I'll see you back next week, same time, same